Hey guys, thanks so much for stopping by, for checking out the tests. Oh, you know, a lot happens, right, with channels and between channels sometimes, but this, if there's one thing I can't endure is hypocrisy. And I can't believe uh, what happened. I am going to share this with you. Uh, John Leonard Walson, this message is for you. You pinned a post on your most recent video. If you've pinned and loved this post, it's because you're following behind this person's comment, right? If you've loved and put a heart on a comment. John Lukak commented on your page that you should steal my community members, get the money from them to be able to get your own telescope. I thought that was disgusting, degrading, and the trolls that I've been having on my channel are all initial JL, and it's all pages that have just been opened. That's all I will say, but some of your amazing community members come to see my channel and I've respected that all my one and a half year that I've been here. And another thing, John Leonard Walson, is that in 10 or 15 of my videos, I've always talked well about you and I've always sent people your way to your channel. So it was very discerning to see how childish you are to have done that. I'm not going to scream at you. I'm not going to call you a dumbass, even though you are. I find it absolutely disgusting. And John Leonard Walson, for the first time, I can admit that you are a hypocrite to have posted that on your channel and loved it. So your intentions are very well there for everyone to see. Please take the time to go see John Leonard Walson's last video and his pinned post by John Lukak before he takes it down, the hypocrite. So I took the telescope out. I could have waited because it was only for 15 minutes, but I find this was a 15 minutes of beauty to be able to see the surface. I wasn't seeing the surface like this with my four inch telescope. The clarity was not there. I was getting in close, but the clarity was not there. We have the clarity now. We're gonna be able to get in very close. The outlining of most of these supposed craters is where everything is hiding inside of the supposed ejecta around the craters what you're seeing that billowing light are lit objects and structures there could possibly even be movement but of course it's clarifying it this is why i've introduced the color to the footage it's a color camera and the moon is colorful why would we not show the color See the nice close panning? You can't get closer than that. Uh, seeing I can zoom in this close means I will be able to get some nice close zoom shots. There are many ways of being able to go in. I'm not going to go all out and go in right now. I want to see the quality of this telescope and zoom in. Each of these areas, we're not seeing the color, so the gray is not, you know, it's not telling us anything. But when we see with the color, it changes a lot of the way we're seeing the surface. There's Montes Apenninus. This is the mountain range here. Eratosthenes crater at the end, like an eye. And Copernicus. All around this area and included, you can see right here, look, Montes Apenninus. See that white towering object sticking out of the ground? You can't tell me you, you can't see it now. There's no pixelation here whatsoever. They are there. It's just that the objects that are on the surface, people are like, well, we don't know what it is. Okay, but we can still very clearly see that these objects are definitely constructed. Anyone with a little bit of common sense can very easily understand this. A lot of what is stumping people is not understanding the techniques of the ways people are getting in with their footage, which it really should not matter. As you can see here, when we zoom in to the surface, we get to the surface and we remain always in the gray field, right? We see this gray, white hue, blur, oscillation, and it's what I'm working on. I'm working on a less um, oscillative, can we say that? Less oscillating atmospheric disturbance in front of the moon. At times, the atmospheric disturbance is just very bad. So we try to find ways to better that, to be able to show the surface. Here's Tycho Crater, beautiful crater to the right there. But around Tycho Crater, all these objects, you know, there is so much there. Here's 
Clavius crater on the top with Tycho at the right, the white one, that you can see Longomontanus crater at the back there, a big crater. All these craters have paths, tunnels, definite tunnels that are going and leading off to other tunnels. And these are the things that I love getting into to be able to see. And look at these white specks and bumps. When you zoom in close to an area on the moon, you see these white specks or white uh, unusual anomalies that are on top like chicken pox all over these structures on the moon. What are they? Even if they were natural, we know that something's up because NASA's never mentioned them. How could they not mention these objects if they're all over the bloody moon? Clavius Crater. I've shown many structures. That Clavius Crater is filled with structures and greenery. We get close to the surface, I've shown it, and I've shown it with a four inch telescope. Understand, some of you, and guys, don't get me wrong, okay? We all have our bad days. I was really upset with John Leonard Walson's comment. Do you imagine him liking a comment, wanting to siphon money from my community members to get himself a scope? I'm dumbfounded, I'm baffled, I'm astonished by this maneuver, and this is what sort of stimulated me to uh, tell the others because some of my community members I've sent there and I'm so sorry I have. Look at the surface of the moon. We are not looking at craters, my friends. We are looking at possibly ancient Mayan ruins. Hey, that could be too. We find ancient ruins here on earth and we see these crater-like uh, areas all around um, the structuring that they found recently in archaeology. Look it up. They're not craters on the surface. There were certain ways of placing their buildings and structures and all their uh, services, if you want, are all in one area in a circle. And these, this is what these craters are. And it's what I believe very well. These are not impact craters. We should be looking at cone-shaped craters. Absolutely impossible that craters would hit into uh, the surface of the moon and not leave at least one or two giant holes for us to see it. The albedos inside of these craters are all high albedos, meaning the surface terrain of these craters or some of them are elevated over the walls. It makes no sense. And where's the debris? Where's the excess debris of everything after, you know, explosions? You mean to tell me these little trails are ejecta? No way. It would be a lot wider than that. We'd have five or six trails over the surface of the moon as wide as hell, very vigilant, a very visible to see you trying to get the photos of the moon of areas that we're not seeing um john lear is also and has also been doing the same uh for a heck of a long time Check out WSO YouTube channel when you get a chance. I'm going to take a chance. Jarti Mowat. Please tell me if I pronounced that right, my friend. Thank you very much for the generous donation. Welcome to the community. And it's a pleasure for me to interact with you and to connect with you. Thank you very much.